Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. Uh, today I'm so excited to share with you some ideas and uh, uh, tips for dealing with cut work. If, you, if any of you have ever done cut work, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like a reverse applique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you uh, how to do it on one of our ornaments, our Happy Hoop Decor Volume 2. This is our Christmas Nativity ornaments. And I'm going to actually show you how to do this cute little angel and the star. So today, I'm going to first show you, you can see what cut work means if you've never seen cut work. It's where you cut the inside and you can actually see through that uh, design. And so it's just thread, really. It's kind of like a lace almost, if you will. And then the fun part about this is her wings are also cut work and they're made with And that's the same with the star. The star has a mylar on top of the cut work. And something interesting when you're working with mylar, you can see how the white thread brings out the white parts of the mylar because it's an iridescent mylar. And the silver with the silver stitching brings more silver out. Isn't that interesting? The same color of iridescent mylar but yet how different it looks with the different threads. All right, so to start with, for those of you who have never done um, cut work to start with, I like to hoop two layers of wash away stabilizer. And then once I've got my fabric ready, on the back of the fabric, I prepare it by adding uh, a layer of, it's a wove, woven fusible interfacing. It's the same thing as like Shapeplex. Um, that is so good because it will really help you from having any puckering and a nice flat, um, beautiful stitch out. All right, so once we get to the actual stitch, um, instead of cutting the outside of your applique, which is what you would normally do, you're gonna cut the inside. So the difference would be, it's kind of a reverse applique is what I like to call it. So the way I like to do it is, you don't want to get the stabilizer. So to just get the fabric, I insert, uh, just a, use a, a seam ripper, and I'm going to show you on the back. I do check the back to make sure that seam ripper hasn't poked through the stabilizer, which it has not. Now, if you accidentally go all the way through the stabilizer, just patch it with another piece of stabilizer and you just put tape right around that. So that will be fine. If you accidentally go through, no worries. It's just called floating a piece. You can just add another piece of stabilizer to the back. And I'm going to turn it back over. So now that I know I just have fabric, I just go and I cut the fabric a little bit open so that you've got, um, you can see that I've gone through both layers, the fabric and the woven fusible uh, interfacing. And once you've got, you can see that you've got those two layers, but the stabilizer is still intact. Then what I like to do is I take a sharp uh, pair of scissors. You could use snippers, anything that comes to a point would be really ideal. And then I first, I tri trim one side, and then I like to take a pair of tweezers. It's a little bit easier to hold it on this, and I trim the other side. And so I just continue trimming, um, starting from the middle of the star and going out to each point. And that makes it a whole lot easier, because I know this is kind of a small, you know, more intricate looking, design and so it's going to take a little bit uh, smaller finer tools in order to get it off. So once you've cut this whole thing out and I'm going to go ahead and just pretend like I've cut the whole thing out but once you've cut the whole thing out then you'll just have your white thread on the top and the bottom so if you're wanting to see this ornament from the front and the back and you want it to match, I would match whatever top thread you're using. You could match the bobbin thread so that it all matches front to back. All right, and so after you've done that first stitch out on top of this, it's kind of a filler stitch. And then you're gonna take your mylar and you place your mylar over the top of that and you'll do your second stitch out and it's gonna look similar to this. So you can see the white stitching on there and then you've got the mylar and the coolest part about mylar is when you take it off all you have to do is tear it away and so once you've torn it away if you have any little pieces like that there again I just use my tweezers and I just rip it right off and once you have that all ripped away your very last stitch is a satin stitch that just finishes off that star and it gives it your 
finish look on your star. And that's about all there is to it. It's so simple and I love how easy it is to do. Now you may be asking where to find mylar. The iridescent mylar is found in our uh, Kimber Bell Mylar Sheets pack. There are a couple different ones, but this one has the iridescent mylar and there's three sheets in there, which is plenty to do several. As you can see, I didn't even use um, but a part of a sheet. And so you could make several ornaments from one sheet and this comes with 12 uh, different, well, it's four different uh, flavors, if you will, of mylar, and there are uh, 12 total pieces. So there's three of each kind, and that is so fun. It's available at your local quilt store, and I was wondering if we have any questions out there. We don't today. All right. Um, if you would like to, I don't know how many of you spotted this cute little pillow to the side of me here, but this is our welcome pillow. And it actually, if you have not signed up for our Kimberbell newsletter on our Kimberbell website, if you'll go there and you sign up, there's a free pattern for this pillow right there as a download that you can uh, take and make. It'd be really fun to make that. And thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday Tips today. If you have any other questions, please, please comment below, and we're happy to answer any of your questions. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week.